Okay, so this week we're going to start on so-called propositional logic or symbolic logic. I mean, you'll hear it called both. Um, there's different reasons for that. It doesn't matter which you use. But, you know, the reason it's called propositional logic is, well, it's all about propositions, right? The logic we've been talking about, we've been using is an older form from Aristotle that is often called categorical logic. You know, it uses these categories of all, some, whatever. Propositional logic works with propositions. It's like, okay, fine. What is a proposition then? A proposition is nothing too mysterious. A proposition is just a statement that can be true or false. Um, now look, lots of speech and writing is not propositions. You know, you might command somebody, hey, shut the door. You might ask a question, what's the reading this week? You might, you know, ministers in churches might say, I pronounce you man and wife, or I don't know what else ministers do, but you know. You know. Anyway, these are not propositions. Propositions are claims about things, right? You know. The printed version of your textbook has a red cover. It in fact does, I'm looking at it, right? It has, the printed version of your textbook has 428 pages. So on and so forth, right? Now look, there's one sort of misunderstanding I wanna head off right away though. Propositions versus non-proposition distinction is not the same thing as the supposed fact versus opinion distinction. Um, I won't subject you guys to me going off on a rant. I kind of hate this distinction for a lot of reasons. You know, I feel like the fact opinion distinction is saying everything's either black or white, when as a matter of fact, there's all, very few things are, right? But whatever you, whether you like the fact distinct opinion distinction or not, and every high school English teacher seems to think it's her mission in life to like spread the gospel of the fact opinion distinction. But even if you like it, it's not the same thing as the proposition versus not proposition distinction. You know, many, many, many things that your high school English teacher would have, you know, said were opinions are very clearly propositions. Reagan was a great president. That's a proposition. Ocean View, you know, Norfolk here where I live is a nice place to live. It's also a proposition, right? And now look, you might be saying, well, but you know, those are controversial. People disagree. Well, look, people disagree about a lot of things and they're still propositions, right? The earth is round or the earth is flat. People disagree. The statement the earth is flat can still be true or false even though people disagree. It is in fact false. To go even further though, you know, you say, well, well, okay, okay, Mr. Duncan, you know, we know how to settle the earth is flat, even though there's some people won't listen, you know, there's all kinds of tests you can do, and certain things will happen if it's flat, those things don't happen, so we know it's round, you know, it's not so clear how we would settle whether Reagan was a great president or Ocean View is a nice place to live, right? Well, but look, I want you to note that whether or not something can be true is a different question from whether we can know it's true, right? At this very moment, as I am recording this lecture, there are, is a certain number of hairs on my head. I have no idea how many it is. I don't even know the range, right? I have like a guess, but I don't know. I guess I could Google this and see, but why spoil the fun, right? Now, the number of hairs on my head is either an even number you can either split it in half with no hair left over, or it's an odd number, you split it in half and one hair will be left over. It is one or the other. I have no idea, and unless God exists, no one knows and no one ever will know, right? 
there's a fifth, you know, roughly I think there's a coin flip chance it's odd. There's a coin flip chance it's even. I have no idea, but this statement, the number of hairs on my head at this precise second is an even number, is either true or false, even though I don't know whether it's true or false, and no one ever will, right? Does God exist? Maybe I'll ask him this, right? One of these days, right? The feeling is below on your, you know, if you found yourself in heaven with God, it's below on your list of questions, but whatever. Speaking of which, God exists, right? Now, I'm going to guess that in the handy-dandy classification high school English teacher gave you, this is an opinion. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But it's very clearly a proposition, right? God either exists or he doesn't. And think about this, right? Logic is an easy class. Well, again, it might not be clear what makes this true or false, but I think you can picture situations where you would say this is true and situations where you can say this is false, right? If after the semester's over, you find out that everybody failed except for two people and those two people had a C and a D, you would say this is false, right? Especially if you found out they did find all their other classes. If on the other hand, you found out that every single person in class made an A, including, you know, a couple people who never did any work, you'd say it was easy, right? Borderline cases, you might disagree, but you can at least picture what would settle this question, right? We might not agree whether Reagan is a nice president or was a good president. But, you know, look, if 15 years from now we have, like, say, a President Smith and President Smith, like, drives the economy in the ground and the unemployment rate's 30 percent and he gives California to the North Koreans just for fun, you know, nobody has a job except for the people in California who are now on North Korean work gangs we would probably all agree Mr. Smith was not a great president, right? We can picture situations where Smith is a great president is true or false, and it's clearly false, right? You might not agree whether Ocean View is a nice place to live. I like it pretty well out here. Weirdly enough, a lot of the cranky people on Ocean View happenings seem to hate it, which is like, well, why don't you move, right? There's this one guy who's always like, in Suffolk, in Suffolk. And I'm like, why don't you move to Suffolk, pal? Anyway. But we can, you know, we might not agree, but, you know. Think about Centralia, Pennsylvania, right? Centralia is this town. I think it was okay. Then there was a giant mine fire and the coal mine under it. And now, like, it smokes out of the ground. It constantly smells like burning sulfur, you know. If you ever went to church and heard about hellfire and brimstone, brimstone is sulfur, and every now and then just a hole will open up in the ground, a fiery hole will open and swallow people's houses. Pretty much everybody who once lived in Centralia has moved out except a few very stubborn people. But look, I think we could all agree, you know, a town that constantly smells like sulfur, rotten eggs, where smoke comes out of the ground, and where you might be swallowed up by a fiery pit at any second is not a nice place to live, right? We could all agree Centralia, Pennsylvania, with its giant burning coal mine fire underneath is not a nice place to live. This ocean view is a nice place to live proposition might be a little harder to settle, but it is the same kind of thing. It's a proposition. You know, again... God exists, we might disagree on, but there is a fact of the matter. It is true or false, whether we know it or not. You know, it is a proposition. Now, I'll, I'll let go the very strong feelings the supposed fact opinion, opinion distinction raises in my mind. You know, personally, I think the way that high school English teachers define it if there is a distinction, then there probably are no such things as facts in the whole world, so it's probably a useless distinction, because people agree on practically nothing, right? I'll get off that horse, though. The important th thing for our purposes is 
that sentences are often made of more than one proposition. Logic is a fun and easy class. Jimmy Carter was president of the US, won a Nobel Prize, and was governor of Florida. How many propositions in logic is a fun and easy class? How many in Jimmy Carter was president of the US, won a Nobel Prize, and was governor of Florida? And what are they in each case? Think about that for a couple seconds. Well, there's two propositions in the first sentence, right? Logic is a fun class. Logic is an easy class, right? Those are two different claims. Maybe they're related, but they're two independent things. You know, one is saying one thing about logic, one is saying it entirely different. Propositions in the second one, there's three of them. Jimmy Carter was president. Jimmy Carter won a Nobel Prize. Jimmy Carter was governor of Florida. Three statements together in the sentence that can be true or false. I don't know if logic is fun or easy. I hope it's fun. I hope it's not too difficult, maybe not easy. In this one, though, proposition one is true. Proposition two is true. Proposition three is false. He was governor of Georgia, right? I say right. Maybe you didn't know that. Now you do. How propositions hook up with each other determines whether a sentence is true. If your friend said to you, logic is a fun and easy class, and you know, you thought it was pretty interesting, but it was really hard, you would, you know, have some complaint and you would say, look, man, it wasn't it wasn't that easy. Or, you know, if you thought it was easy, but God, did you think it was boring? You would have more of a complaint. Maybe you could say, look, you told me it was fun and easy. And it was easy, but man, it was like watching paint dry. You would say your friend has told you something that is not true. Jimmy Carter was president, won a Nobel Prize, and was governor of Florida or Georgia. This first sentence has three propositions, and it's false because they all have to be true for it to be true. He was not governor of Florida. But maybe if I wasn't sure and I said, well, he was president, he won a Nobel Prize, and he was, he was governor of one of those states down there, um, Florida or Georgia, I'm pretty sure, then the sentence would be true, right? Why? They're hooked up in a different way now. Let's look at a few more just to practice this idea. Robots are sentient or they are just machines. How many propositions here? What are they? Robots are sentient. Robots are just machines. I stole all these from Andrew Lavin's critical thinking book. It's a pretty good book. It's, you know, not perfect. And, and I'm trying to focus on some different stuff for this semester. So decided not to use it. Samir, Raj, and Asia were late today. How many propositions here and what are they? Think for a second. Samir was late today. Raj was late today. Asia was late today, right? Three different propositions. Y'all don't know nothing, but I at least know, but at least I know something that that'll help us get us out, help get us out of this mess. Two propositions. Y'all don't know nothing. At least I know something that will help to get us out of this mess. Here's one that might be trickier. We'll talk a lot more about these statements. If then, conditional statements. If I had a cow, I'd have all the milk I need. How many propositions here and what are they? Think about this for a second. This is a bit trickier than some of the others. There's actually two, right? I have a cow. I have all the milk I need. Now we'll talk about these conditional statements of the ways that propositions can be hooked up together. These are the trickiest 
A, the trickiest to deal with. B, also there's the most debate about how they actually work. We'll talk about all that in a few weeks. I've always been a self-reliant person, and I don't generally like to travel together, but if you can help me to get to Chicago, then I'd be mighty grateful. There is a lot going on in this one. Think about this for a couple seconds. How many propositions do you think they are, and what are they? There's four, right? I've always been a self-reliant person. I don't generally like to travel together. You could help me get to Chicago. I'd be mighty grateful, right? Yeah. This is kind of a monster of a sentence. It'll be a few weeks before we deal with these in any kind of formal logic. Just be aware this can be pretty complicated. There can be a lot going on.